Hello and welcome back to the sixth episode in this tutorial series. I'm sure this is the part many of you have been eagerly awaiting because we are finally going to add a mirror. So, project search, search for mirror, drag in the VRC mirror prefab in the scene and then position it if you want to. You can also rotate and scale it if you want. And then yeah, you can turn off pro grids and just make it slightly off the wall, not inside the wall. Uh, so now just rename it to, I'm gonna press F2, and rename it to HQ Mirror. And then uh, if you imported VR World Toolkit, like you should have in part one, then you'll see a button that says show players world. So I'm gonna click that and then I'm also gonna add on the reflect layers walkthrough so that it shows the couch here. Otherwise, it doesn't. And I'm also going to add pickup so that it shows any um, like pickups we might add later on. Now, disable this mirror. Okay, so we have the mirror now, but how do we toggle it on and off? So this is where UI comes in. We want to have a toggle that we can click. So in the hierarchy, go to UI, right click, obviously, go to UI, and then toggle this will spawn in a toggle parented to a canvas which is necessary to display ui components however we need to fix a few things first obviously so in the hierarchy click the canvas and then change the render mode to world space now of course as you can see this is way too big so under the Rect Transform, I'm going to scale all of these down by a factor of 1,000. Then copy, tab, paste, tab, paste. Then press F to zoom in on it, and then I'm going to change the position there both to zero. Now you want to change the layer from UI to default. Yes, change children. And then add two components, a box collider. So because if it you don't have a box slider on it, it's going to create its own. So this is just to ensure that uh, it's not way too big. And then you're also going to want to add a BRC UI shape. And this is to ensure that you can actually access it in VR chat by using the laser pointer on your hand. And changing it to the default layer makes it so that you can access it without having to open your menu first. Otherwise, if it's on the UI layer, you can only access it when you open your menu and then point at it. And then position it slightly against the wall, but not inside of it. I'm going to go into orthographic mode for this. And then I, you can also just delete these top faces here. For the time being, you know, add them later. But yeah, I clicked those, backspace, deleted them. Don't need them. In the hierarchy under canvas, click toggle. Then set its width to 700 and its height to 120. And then reset this position here. And then for this is on, make sure it's unticked. For this navigation, you want to set it to none instead of automatic. In the hierarchy under toggle, click label. Make the text HQ mirror toggle. I'm gonna copy this and then paste it. Change the color to white and then increase the font size. You can change the font and you can even import custom fonts by going to C, Windows, Fonts, and then just dragging one in. You can also add a shadow by clicking add component shadow. Now you can just that if you want. Click background in the hierarchy and change the width and height to 100. Then change the offsets to 50 and negative 50. Then click the check mark in the hierarchy and change the width and height of that to 100 as well. Finally, select the label and drag it. Now, under toggle, where it says on value change, click the plus 
and drag in our HQ mirror game object. Then under no function, go to game object and under dynamic pool, set it to set active. This will change whether our game object is active or not, depending on the state of this toggle. Now duplicate the HQ mirror, control D, rename it to LQ mirror, click LQ mirror, and then under the VRC mirror reflection script, click show only players, and then duplicate the toggle button we just created and drag it down. Change the label to LQ mirror toggle, and under the toggle, drag in our LQ mirror in place of our HQ mirror. To ensure that only one mirror is on at a time, add a new slot, drag in the HQ mirror toggle, and under no function, click it and go to toggle, static bool is on, and keep the checkbox unticked. This ensures that to toggle the LQ mirror on, the HQ mirror must first be off. However, if you have one mirror on and want to select a different one, you have to click the button twice. So if the HQ mirror is on and you want to turn on the LQ mirror, you have to click the LQ button once first to turn off the HQ mirror, and then you have to click it again to turn on the LQ mirror. Press the play button to test this with Cyanemu, which you also should have imported in part one. Don't forget to set this no function here again to game object set active. And don't forget to do the same toggle action to the HQ mirror toggle. If you want to make this UI but using Udon instead, you can check out Valgan's video, link in the description. So just to make sure that they're So there's a problem that can occur when two two-dimensional planes are sharing the exact same space. So a uh, very slight seizure warning, but it's only going to last a second. I turn on both the HQ mirror, and then if I also turn on the LQ mirror, that happens. Naturally, we want to avoid this, so all we have to do is make sure that they are not at the exact same space so just move one slightly in front of the other if you have a larger world note that the low quality mirror will render avatars behind it even if they are through walls for the sake of performance and privacy it would be wise to position mirrors where they're not going to do this or even design your rooms where mirrors will go with this in mind by the way you probably want to organize your hierarchy at this point you can essentially use empty game objects as folders. However, you want to make sure that the position of these is reset first. If it's not, then I can go to, say, just click on this, which I'm not using, reset its transform, which you can see is everything's at 000, zero, zero. And then if I drag it under this ga empty game object, which is not at the origin, this only changes the position in the component. It'll actually still be in the same position in the world space. However, this messes with throw grids. So as you can see, if I turn it on, it snaps not to increments of one relative to the world space, but relative to the position of the parent game object. So to fix this, just drag it out and then reset the position of that game object and then drag it back in and it works fine. Otherwise, if you reset the position of a parent game object, then the child game object will follow and then it will not be in the same position as it used to be. Bit of a bonus, I had a question asked in the comments about how to do neon lighting. First, add in an object that you want to give neon lighting to. So I'm going to press Alt click and then add in a small cylinder with zero height segments. Position it. So, what I'm going to do to make this curve is I'm going to Make sure this is set to center instead of pivot. I'm going to extrude it by holding shift. I'm going to rotate it 
45 degrees. And then I'm going to do that again. What you want to make sure for these curves is that the polygons adjacent to each other are same in size and shape. I'm going to remove the box collider and then create a new material and make it emissive. So I'm going to apply it and then check this emissive box here and then change the color to whatever I want. Make sure that the global illumination is set to baked. And then bake. A few tips with this one. Uh, one, you can enable Bezier curves and Booleans in Pro Builder by going to Edit, References, Pro Builder, and then Experimental Features Enabled. However, uh, both of them kind of suck in Pro Builder, so I'd recommend using an actual program for 3D modeling like Blender instead. And then two, make sure the lighting fits your scene. So if you're going for a warm or natural look, you'll want to limit yourself to colors in the Kelvin spectrum. If you're going for an artificial look, you can use colors on the full visible light spectrum. This is covered in the Blender Guru lighting course I recommended at the beginning of lesson four. Correction, uh, I realized that the tube for the neon here was not perfectly smooth. So when you go to add a cylinder, it when you check smooth, it should be smooth so that you don't see the uh, polygons like you would if it were not smooth. Like here you can see uh, in the shading that there's clear differences between this polygon and that one or if it's smooth then it smooths it so it's less noticeable to see when a polygon changes from one to another however when you extrude a cylinder in pro builder then the uh, smoothness breaks as you can see to fix that, what you need to do is, when in face select mode, go to the smoothing groups editor, click on that, and then click on the pipe here, select control A. So that selects all the faces and then click one to set them all to one smoothing group. However, since these ends here at such an intense angle, we don't want them to be in the same smoothing group. So what we could do is we could Set them to another smoothing group or just delete them and that fixes it too since we don't need them we can just delete them that's it for this lesson the next one will be a continuation of this one where i'll show you how to toggle objects between the default and walkable layers by using ui with udon